today we'll be using templating and dashboards in Home Assistant. By the end of this video, you can have this cool card created, the light report. This will tell you all of the lights that are currently on in your home. But more importantly, I'm gonna teach you the code behind this markdown card and how you can adapt it to your own needs. But first, let's roll the intro. First things first, we're going to need to create an empty dashboard tab. I've created it over here. Now go on your three dots and click edit dashboard. Click over here to add card and search for the markdown card. Same card that we used in my previous video. Now that we're inside the markdown card, we can start adding some code. You'll find all of this code in the blog post link in the description down below. So let's look at this report in detail. We have the first part of the report, which is the title. We have the second part, which is a combination of templating and text. And then we have a series of lines for each entry in the list. For those of you that have a keen eye, you might have noticed something strange. The number two lights are on, but we have five light entities. Can you actually guess why? Before I actually reveal it in the video, I'm obviously gonna be trusting you. And if you can guess it, type it down in the comment section down below. Feel free to pause the video for a second to think about it. First things first, you're gonna find yourself with an empty canvas. So two things you're going to need to do. To do the paragraph, you need this comma, H2, you can have H1, H2, H3. So the lower the number, the more bolder the character is. So let me show you. So if I put something like test with everything in HTML, for example, we need a closing tag. And to express this, we always have a less than symbol and a slash. And then we just put again H3 and we ensure that we close it. So this way now, if I write something afterwards, you can see that it uh, defaults to a P, which would be a paragraph. So if I switch this over to an H2, now here you can have things on different lines. So if we, for example, did something like this. So in the coding, I said a different line. Pressing enter doesn't actually uh, return the value. To actually do that, you need to use a specific tag called BR, basically force and enter entry. Now this icon over here is simply an HA icon, and then there's a definition icon equals to. Let me show you the bare bones of it. So we're gonna get rid of the text for a second. Now this HA icon, we have icon equals to, and then we're gonna close it. And in here, we're gonna add in the MDI and colon. Now we can actually see all of the possible MDIs that we can add. So we type in a letter, we should like autofill, so we can put rabbit, okay, why not? So we're gonna put a rabbit symbol, we'll close it with the with a single quote. So if you wanted to put a little rabbit symbol on your card, that's how you do it. You never want spaces, so if you do have one, just keep it all nice and tidy. Basically what we have over here, we have a light bulb instead of the light, and we have just the text light report. So I'm just gonna get rid of this example that I created, so we're back to where we were before. The second line here is number of lights on. What we're doing is, we've got an H3 opening, we have an H3 closing, exactly the same way as before. We have our text, so I'm just gonna copy and paste that in, right? And that's all good. Let's see how we calculate that number two. The code comes from this curly bracket, goes all the way down, and just right before we close the H3. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to copy this, and jump to the developer tools and the templating tab to analyze it in a little bit more detail to explain it to you. So what we have here, the most simplest form is to just have the state slot light. We can see that this is pulling a domain state. So we say to plate domain state light. So there's a couple of things that are happening here, length, list, select attribute. So what I would suggest you to do first is pick one. Now I want you to add the pipe symbol and then write list in lowercase. This is going to give you the complete list of everything so this is like attributes and states of all of your lights so we can add another parameter here so we have a pipe and then we're going to define something called length length is counting the number of occurrences the number of lights in the list so i have 42 a light but we're only interested in the lights that are actually on how do we do that we use something called the select attribute so we're going to go and have a pipe select ATTR, and then we're gonna open our brackets, we're gonna add some quotes in, and we're gonna close our brackets for syntax, and then we're gonna set the parameter. Here we actually gonna set the state of the light to be on. We're gonna go state, comma, equals to, comma, on. 
and then close that bracket. And it's equal, not equals. So I've got a little typo here. So if we remove it. And what we need to do is we need to shift this before we uh, do a length and potentially before we do a list also. If we were to remove the length, I'll show you. You can actually see now it's giving me the same thing as before, but this is a shorter list. It's actually only showing me what's on. Remember at the beginning of the video, I actually hinted the fact that we have five light entities on and that's actually true. And the reason is, and if you've guessed it, well done in the comment section down below, I'm going to certainly give you a hard comment. It is because of groups, right? So whenever you have a light that is part of a group, then the whole group is on if that is the way that is configured. So I would recommend that you actually create an exclusion list to filter out all of those lights that are groups or theoretically any light that you don't want to count towards this number. To do this, we need to set some parameters. So this is what is happening over here. You can see that the difference is here that we have a curly bracket and a percent opening. And we have a curly bracket and a percent closing. So remember that. And because we're passing multiple values, we're using an array effectively. But that, what that means, we're just using squared brackets inside here. And this is where you're going to need to list out all of your entities. You don't need the light dot part. So just put in the name of the entities all in here separated by single quotes and a comma. And then you set a parameter and the parameter can be something that you define yourself. But if you're following this tutorial, you're probably going to put reject. So I'm going to be adding the rejection list. Probably want to do this as the first thing that you actually do. So I'm going to add the pipe in here. Now you can see that the reject is not defined. The reason why is because this follows a pure order. So we need to have our set reject first. So let's look at what we've just copied in. The reject attribute is a function. Function is expecting three parameters, the object ID, in, and reject. So the reject is the keyword. So reject needs to match exactly what you put over here. So I put rejects, then I've got reject is undefined. So I just change it here and reject is fine. You've got an error here because I've got another copy of the code and now it's all fixed. So now you can see that you can put whatever you want here put a thing that they're all aligned. Let's look at the object underscore ID. What does that actually mean? So let's exclude colored lights from this list. So if I just take this out, right, so we can see it right here, colored lights. If we put it back in the exclusion list, it will disappear again. So now it's gone. The in parameter means that we're allowing for multiple values. Hence, this expects it to be an array. So now that's done, we can jump back to the dashboard. We have completed the first section. We now need to look at how are we going to print out all of those entries. We've got the for state in states.light. So states.light, remember, exactly the same as this. So we're basically saying for every entry in states.light, we want to do something specifically. We're using an if statement. So we're saying if and look how this is defined, right? With the curly bracket and the percent. So if the state dot state, so the state of the state double equals is comparing values on, then we got to do this thing. So we are doing some HR table TDTR. So what the hell is this doing? So let's try and remove this piece out. So our HR is giving us these lines. Table and TRTD is creating that structure. So it, it looks it look quite Neat. Here I'm adding a state.entityID. Here I've got state.entityID, so I'm printing them out and I've got a little light.turn off. Now it's actually attempting something quite wacky. I was trying to attempt a some sort of button or URL so you can actually turn them off within the slide report itself. I didn't quite get it to work. I didn't get it really to work actually at all. So if you actually do know, let me know. Uh, and if you can contact me and that will be great and I will make maybe perhaps another video and if you don't want to miss that other video remember to subscribe to this channel and like this video if you're getting value out of it so it spreads a lot more now back to us so we don't need this uh, link URL part so we just remove it completely so the code is a bit cleaner and remember that we need to close the tags that we've opened so we're closing our TD our TR and our table and the HR basically is just a line so you need to basically close and open a line. We need our end ifs, because we've got an if statement over here. And we have that end for because it's the end of the loop. There's one more thing to do. We need to really clean that up. We need to fix this, and we need this to have only two entries instead of having uh, three entries. So I'm gonna pause again, second time in this video, 
and I want to understand, I want to know if you know, if you can guess, what would be the right change? Indicate which line, line three, line five, line six, line seven, but what code would you put in? Hopefully you can have a little bit of a think of it and now let's keep playing the video. So this is my solution to this code, how, how to actually solve it. I would just take the reject attribute again in, that we used previously and I would just put it here at the end. So we would define our list only once at the top and then we just call it twice. So we use it for the top and then we use it over here. Now I was actually thinking, could we simplify the if statement and basically ignore this at all? So for context, if we were to switch this to, for example, off, we can see all of the off lights. But what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to try to add this select attribute to. So I'm going to uh, get this in and add the pipe at the end. And now we can see something very, very wacky. Everything's disappeared. What I did was, because I've set off here, and now I've put the filter saying equal to on, then they've all gone. So if I change this back to on, you can see our lights are appearing. What does it actually mean and it's telling us that this pipe expression is basically making this if statement completely useful. It uses, right, so we can get rid of it. So if I remove the if statement, and I remove the end if statement, and I keep it a bit more cleaner, and you can keep a space or you can not keep a space. In this way, in nine lines of code, we've achieved a little light report with a little light over here. And we have two lights on and the actual lights that we have over here. I hope you enjoy the little quizzes in these videos. I'm going to leave you with a bigger templating video that you can watch over here. This is a templating masterclass, full course, it's 46 minutes. So bookmark it, watch later if you haven't got the time now to watch it. But it is comprehensive and it takes a look at templating. So I'll recommend you watch it. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next one. Ciao.